I, got, I ended up at a point where I had to go into an old age home. I think I'll just head out. Like if Marilyn died before me, I'd get a sailboat and I'd just head out. I'd just rather go out and die out in the water somewhere. This is where I have to be. So we're Michael and Marilyn Geel, and uh, we live on our 38 foot 1965 Chris Craft. We've lived afloat for almost 25 years total. I grew up on the water. To some degree, I mean, my dad had a boat. I loved the waves, I loved the storm. So this is the V-Birth. So this is where friends and family stay. There's the two beds and there's cupboard space and everything. So this is just for, you know, family or whatever. When we have company, that's the spare bedroom. This is the head, which is also the spare bathroom. This is my office. I, I have worked from home for most of my adult life. And whenever people complain about having their home offices too small, I just laugh and say, how about four square feet? And this is the salon, which is the equivalent of your living room. That's the galley. And it is limited on a boat. They made these old boats with storage everywhere. That, you know, it's pretty good that there's a lot of storage space, but I do find the kitchen limiting. So that just extended my galley wow. space by a couple of feet. So this is the aft cabin, which is like the master bedroom. And I remember thinking, wow, it's the smallest master bedroom I've ever had. But we have everything. And I have a dresser and a chest of drawers, a three-piece bathroom. Either. These boats were for the doctors and lawyers of the day. They were like the Cadillac sure? of boats. She picked, up, she picked up knitting when we were living on our smaller boat for a winter. It kind of fits the lifestyle. So one of the things that happens is if he has to work on the engines, I kind of think of something to do for the day and get lost because it's my living room. You know, there's not a lot of space. I'm going to strip the whole thing down to nothing except for the block because I have to be able to get it out that door. So having two engines for me is a comfort thing. If one engine goes down, we can get out of the storm. We can get back to shore. We can get back on the dock if we have to. The boat has twin 350 gas engines. Now this is me stripping my motor down. This is kind of where we live in the summer. It's like our patio. These are storage areas in the summer for life jackets. And, but at this time of year, I have my fire up here. Different times of year, I do different things. You can actually go sit on the bow. There's seating for six or eight people out there, and it's lovely when you're cruising. This is the classic 1965 Chris Craft console control. We already talked about the tarp being on it to protect the wood. We pull our 13-foot inflatable, inflatable boat behind us. Everywhere so we that's go. a lifeboat for yeah. people we have aboard for ourselves. So one of the questions we get asked a lot when we say we live on a boat, one of the first questions people ask us is, but aren't you cold? And we always laugh because, first of all, we only have 300 and some square feet to heat, so it doesn't take a lot of effort. I don't want to ever live at anchor, but my preference is to be on a dock with hydro and water and high-speed internet to the door. But it basically converts the battery, house battery power, to electric, temporarily. Eventually, it runs itself down, and then you have to be plugged back in or turn on the generator to recharge it. And some people, like on boats, they have that wind generator. Like a lot of times, sailboats will have it. And even if you're sitting on a dock, that generator's still going. Yeah. Even if it's just enough to charge your house batteries, yeah. and or for people that aren't on their boat a lot, it'll keep the bilge pump running. Well, I think in the summer, to work on wood outside, you work on it during the, the warm season. The wood's got to had a chance to completely dry. So when you should be working on wood we outside, wanna, we go you want to be playing, right? <laughs> so it's a balance of, okay, get this amount done and then go play. If you kept it up, that's the important thing, is like to keep it up. From the start. And right now, I haven't. Yeah. So it's like, it needs quite a bit of work, probably this summer. Having to, you know, we've had to work for a living, so that means just like anybody else in a house, you leave your house and go to work, and it takes up your time and your energy, and, you know, yeah. so it's balancing what you do in your spare time or free time. There's so many decisions to make. They have to decide if they want to sail 
or have power. For us, it was important to have bright light and windows. Uh, sailboats, you're down lower and you kind of have to be on tippy toe to see out the window. Sail, how much space do you need? Do you want to live at anchor? Lots of people do that with a generator and inverter and really very self-sufficient. Um, that's not our style. Or in a marina, and lots of people like living in a marina and being part of a community and having other liveaboards around them. Or lots of marinas don't allow liveaboards, so you have to do that research too. There's lots of liveaboards here, but they're either at anchor or they're, you know, sometimes we joke about them being sneakerboards. Marinas need to be open to people doing this. We're not all going to create problems. Most of us who live this lifestyle are just living our life. <laughs> living our life because we love the ocean. Like we're very fortunate um, in the time we've been living aboard, we've found marinas and that allow <coughs> liveaboards, which is very rare on the coast here. They think we're all a bunch of, you know, party, you know, yeah. we create problems. They, they paint everybody with the So they brush. don't want, you know, to deal with that. Yeah. But fortunately, we have lived, we've taken care of marinas, we've taken, now we're taking care of this property, we've been here for four years. So, but, if this ended, then we think, okay, what else are we going to go do? I think a lot of people <laughs> will try this way of life but almost probably 99% of them go back to land. They may have had a boat, but most of the time it sits there and they haven't experienced a lot of different conditions. We get people looking in the windows, not so much here, but when we've been in marinas, it's kind of life in a fishbowl. People want to know how you live and who you are and what you do. We don't want everybody doing it because then it wouldn't be unique and we wouldn't be as alone out here, which we like, right? So uh, we're always kind of glad that it doesn't appeal to everybody. If it's raining or miserable or icy or anything, you know, we're in the elements a lot now. When it's a low tide and we have to pack our laundry up at a 45 degree angle to take it somewhere and, and I have to bring the groceries home down a slippery dock, you know. <laughs> I don't mind all that. It's, you know, it's not Part inconvenient for me because I'm more comfortable on ocean than I am on land. So for him, this was a more natural or easy transition. We've said to couples sometimes, really, it's not about love. You can love each other. If you don't like each other, you shouldn't live on a boat. And, and the other thing, for me as a woman, the other part of that is men have to check their egos at the door. You really do have to be equal partners on a boat to manage in a small space of any kind. And, and negotiate whatever it is you're living. I'm actually, I'm the captain of the boat, I have my ticket, but he's the mechanic, so I don't wanna go anywhere without him, right? The dicier, the more, more dangerous the situation, the calmer I got, which I didn't necessarily work, you know, start out as that being my goal. 25 years ago when we took this leap, we were able to sell a house and make money, which enabled us to pay everything off. So we've owned everything we own for a long time. It's At 40 too. years of age, by then the children have basically left home. There we are sitting in the house. What do we need this for? So we were able to get the boat fairly cheaply. Almost everything else about the lifestyle is probably less expensive than living on land. Again, we're not consumers. We can't buy a lot of things so because we don't have the space for them. So, uh, so it's cheaper in that sense. Um, even if you are in a marina and have to pay mortgage, and we have done that sometimes in our lives, you might pay six or seven hundred a month with all your utilities and stuff. Mortgage is never as expensive as mortgage. Yeah, balanced against the things like when you blow an engine and have to repair it that could be thousands of dollars or when we haul out and do that annual maintenance that's a couple thousand dollars and for Marilyn May we've never wanted much you know even looking around here it looks complicated it looks like we have a lot of stuff and, but really it's pretty simple we we don't we're not great consumers we don't buy a lot of stuff and uh, because of the limits in storage, that's, that's one of the benefits of just not having a really complicated lifestyle. We don't go out to the bar, we don't go to movies, we don't 
go out to dinner very much. We like being here. This is where we want to come at the end of our days. What we run out at is 1800 RPM. Uh, we're bur hardly burning any fuel. Yeah. And what we've done is... We go with the tides as well. We could go to the same place year after year and never get tired of it. Yeah. A lot of people, oh, I've been there, I want to go somewhere different. Well, it's not about the destination for us. It's about just getting off the dock Being and okay. going. And most of the time we like to take people and let them experience what we experience. And you don't have to go very far or very much to do that. I think for me and Marilyn, the least amount of footprint we can have on the environment, the world, the better. I mean, we've had orca whales right up alongside our boat. That's our front yard. Yeah. How many people have otters coming up on their front front? You know, so there's yeah. so many things that living on the land you miss. We had an experience years ago. We had some friends that were caretaking an estate and they invited us to take over for the weekend so they could go somewhere. And we were sitting at the dining room table in the guest house on this estate and there were birds flying around outside and there was wind on the ocean right across the road. Couldn't hear a thing. It the wind was blowing in the big <laughs> fir tree and I I start to get this uncomfortable feeling like we were what's detached from it. <laughs> we were detached. I'm totally from isolated it. from my environment sitting yeah. in this house. Yeah. Because most people on earth never experience that. Yeah. So we know we're really blessed and it's only because we live on a boat yeah. that we experience those things. Like people that live on land don't feel the rocking and the wind like we do, you know. The whole thing about living on a boat, we take our home with us wherever we go. And we can move around, and especially at this stage in life, like, I just retired. We can go wherever we want to go. I think I'd feel a lot older if I didn't live on the water. Like, you, you talk to anybody, if they, they go down to the ocean, and they feel better. Same as if you stand by a waterfall, you're going to feel more relaxed. Or when you're stressed out, you have a shower. Moving water creates negative ions, and they create dopamine. So. Well, we're, gonna <laughs> we're going to buy tickets from the lottery tonight. Yeah. It's $55 million. <laughs> So what we'll do, we'll give this boat to somebody, because That'll it needs work. It. Somebody younger. We'll give them the boat, they'll have the energy to fix it. We'll buy a boat that has a washer and dryer well, it's and a be couch. 55 feet. And a walk in engine room. I'd like to have in the back um, enough room to put a little jet ski. Do you know jet skis? <laughs> yeah, I'd love to ride around in one of those when we're at anchor. The universe will take care of us. We're taken care of. And it's a faith. It's something that we've lived for all our years together and we'll always be given what we need. Maybe not always what we want, but we'll always be given what we need. And that's the most important thing. I think the older you get, the sure. more I don't want to work, I just want to play. Yeah. We've been hanging out for 41 years, so we've kind of jumped through most of the hurdles, I think. <laughs> Sometimes I have moments like when I look at the boat from here and see how much it's moving in the wind, I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh really? Are we going to go on there?